I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. I wanted to post a quick video. Um, this is from Ignite, uh, which took place in Orlando, Florida. And uh, the Ignite conference is one of the largest tech conferences of the year. And I was asked to speak with the Azure backup team. And so I wanted to just give you a quick excerpt of that. And I'll also post the, uh, the link where you can see the full uh, presentation there. It's about 75 minutes for the whole thing. I'll just post a quick excerpt here and I'll also post the link to my GitHub repository where you can download the code and uh, you can do the deployments like I'm doing it on stage. And this is built on some of the same principles that we've been talking about in our automation series. Enjoy. So my name is Dean Safola. I'm a senior fast track engineer with the Azure Customer Experience team. And we help folks like you on board to the cloud at a quick pace. And before that, I spent four years as a senior consultant for Microsoft Consulting Services. And we've implemented Azure Backup for a lot of companies of varying sizes, the most recent of which that I did was for one of the largest retailers in the world. So we've already seen how the cloud can empower us to scale with our disaster recovery, and now we want to focus in a little more on backups. And that's going to mean talking about multiple recovery services vaults in multiple Azure regions, over multiple Azure subscriptions, and even multiple Azure Active Directory tenants. And then we're going to talk about how we can manage all of that stuff at scale, make sure that we have the proper security, monitoring, reporting, and governance in a way that we think will help you, the backup administrators, look cool. Sound good? All right, so let's get started by talking about what it means to successfully manage an environment. So we need to talk about deployments. This is where we're gonna deploy that backup infrastructure, and we end up with multiple environments. And this is where we have our dev, test, prod, performance, etc. And then we have multiple resource groups. And this is where we separate out our environments or our applications or by our departments like IT, finance, HR, etc. And then we have multiple Azure regions. And this is for reasons like disaster recovery or for performance or for high availability. And then we're going to talk about some security. And that's where we're having our environments uh, secured and locked down as well as protecting our backups and then protecting that backup data so that we can protect ourselves from any kind of attacks. And then last, we'll talk about the area of governance. We're gonna manage our configurations, our policies, do our monitoring, performance, alerting, and then talk about some reporting and analytics. So when it comes to talking about deployments, every deployment starts out with a POC, and our deployment starts out that way too. We get a, a VM, we get a vault, we start testing, looks good, so then we're gonna scale up. So now we're doing multiple VMs. But a recovery vault is not limited by a specific type of workload. We can support Windows, Linux, SQL servers, encrypted VMs, Azure files, and more will be coming over time. And one recovery services vault can do a lot on its own. It can scale to 50 storage accounts, 1,000 VMs, and 2,000 SQL databases. Now, that recovery services vault is in a specific Azure region. So when we scale up across our subscription, we need more recovery vaults as we spread out into different regions. And then when we scale out across multiple subscriptions, the recovery vaults scale with us just as well. And then now we have all of this infrastructure that we have to manage and monitor and take care of. So, Let's talk about deploying some of this. Now, I'm going to need everybody's help. We'll need a little audience participation, okay? I need everybody to raise your right hand. Come on, you can do it. All right, now, I need you all to repeat after me. Automation is my friend. You guys don't sound convinced. Why do I say that automation is my friend? The simple reason is when we talk about scale, we're talking about doing more. So we only have two choices when it comes to doing more. Either we get more people, or we have to do more with automation. And since a lot of us aren't likely to get a lot more people, we need all the automation that we can get. 
Now, automation comes in many forms, and we've already seen some with PowerShell. And I want to show you a demo of ARM templates. Now, how many of you have used ARM templates before? All right, that's a pretty good number. So ARM templates are my favorite way of deploying resources in the cloud because I can do a lot of things with them, and it does a lot of things natively for me. So this deployment that we have here, this is going to deploy a bunch of recovery vaults and storage accounts. And you notice that there's not a whole lot of user input. In fact, there's really none. All that's here is what I need to stage my deployment. All the rest of this is inside the template, which we'll look at in a second. So I'll hit Purchase, and that will start the process of deploying my infrastructure. So here's what we're actually deploying. So this is the JSON for deploying a recovery vault. Okay? Doesn't look like a whole lot of code, but it gets a lot done. And then after that, we have some policies. Now, I've got multiple policies that are deployed with each of these vaults. This is a prod policy, and this will just retain our backup data for 60 days. And then after that, we have a non-prod policy that will do it for 14 days. And I've got another one that's compliant with HIPAA, and another one compliant with PCI, and another one for SOX. And the SOX policy is retaining data for seven years. Now, this is a good time for me to mention, in case you weren't aware, that when you do backup stuff with the backup vaults, any one of those recovery points can retain data up to 99 years. Now, you are probably not going to be here if we need that data in 99 years, but the data will still be here. And also, you can have 9,999 individual recovery points for any one of the items that we protect. So after we deploy our backup vault and our policies, we're also going to protect, uh, deploy a couple storage accounts and then a log analytics workspace for doing our monitoring. Now, the reason I said that I like ARM templates so much is because of this block right here. Can you all see that? Let me zoom in a little. So this block is what does all the magic. So we had what I showed you for the recovery vault and the policies. And the way ARM templates normally work is you list out every single resource you want and every parameter. And that takes a lot of code and a lot of writing. And I'm lazy, so I don't like to do that. So I like to use instead this little block right here. This is the copy function. So if you're not familiar with the copy function, what that does is it says, take the thing that I'm doing and do it again and again, and as many times as I want. And we're also using a specific type of deployment, and that type is called deployment. And the purpose of that is it allows me to nest multiple deployments inside this template. And so what we're actually going to do here is deploy 20 recovery vaults and five storage accounts and one the log analytics workspace. And if anybody starts singing the 12 days of Christmas, you're out. So. Let me reset our screen here. So this deployment is done. It took 39 seconds. And in 39 seconds, we have now deployed enough recovery vaults across the world that we can now protect 1,000 storage accounts, 20,000 virtual machines, and 40,000 SQL databases. This is what I mean about deployment at scale.